everybody, welcome to another episode of Earthly Headlines. Uh, today we're going to talk about Cranigs and the coast, the northeastern coastline of Scotland. And um, if you don't know what a Cranig is, it's basically an artificial island that was put there by either either Neolithic people, which is a lot older than what the original dates are, which date to about 800 BC, which was a conventional date. So uh, this article is about this redating from 800 BC to when the Neolithic uh, period starts roughly. Basically, if you're not familiar with uh, the term Neolithic, I've gone over it a bunch of times. Uh, It's basically uh, the people who settled uh, after the last ice age. that time period so about 12,000 or so years ago these islands are really really fascinating and just to give you guys a look these are the outer Hebrides islands of northeastern uh, northwestern rather uh, Scotland and it's very interesting because at the last glacial maximum this whole entire uh, part of Britain was covered with ice so it definitely can't go back any further than than 12,000 years or so because um, because of the giant block of ice there that was on top of everything. They, they say that, well, the, the, the research reveals that some were built more than 3,000 years earlier than previously thought. So that's about 3,800 BC. So not quite 12,000 uh, BC, but still, you never know because there there's so many of these Cranugs that they haven't, that they haven't dated. So... There's a lot of mystery here. They're finding a lot of pottery as well, and these rather large stones that were put put, um, put there by somebody. They weren't just randomly there, sort of like these stepping stones, which I'll show you guys a picture of later. That were uh, this man-made stone bridge, where they would go out into the ocean and then go onto these uh, man-made islands, and whatever it was that they did there, they're not sure. Although they think it has to do with rituals and and uh, stuff that is away from their settlements neolithic britain dates between 4000 to 2000 bc uh because again those these are like the new it it goes by it's like a term that they use to describe their tools but the neolithic actually varies from different regions with the oldest being back at 12,000 years ago they do know for sure, archaeologists do know for sure that Neolithic farmers existed long before written language made its way to the British Isles. So the conventional knowledge is that um, it took a while from, again, Turkey all the way through this westward expansion from Turkey and Asia Minor into uh, Europe. Again, this is a conventional uh, thinking here. Uh, these sites like Stonehenge and the Stone Circles of Orkney uh, are also fit into this ga- category of uh, mysterious sites, mysterious uh, uh, lithic sites, and mono- in some cases monolithic sites like uh, Stonehenge took a huge effort to build these things. And so the Cranigs are pretty, uh, th- they fit into that ca- category as well just because of the sheer mystery behind them. And then when you mix that with these weird runes, ah, oh God, the picked, the pictish runes that that were there that are found all along Scotland, just makes for a really, really weird situation, and a notable situation. So again, just to be clear, the cultural practices and deeper intentions behind these sites are largely unknown. No one's sure what was going on. They're thinking now that this whole place has to be reclassified as a Neolithic monument. Cranigs were always around. Uh, archaeologists knew about them, but they were. They were just sort of uh, assumed to have been built by the people in the Iron Age, which again is about 800 BC. They're all there's about 600 of them that they know of for sure that that go all along the Hebrides Islands, I and mean, there probably are more. Again, there's not enough people or resources to really uh, sift through everything, let alone date every single one. So it's going to be a slow, slow process. But there's this, this new paper anyway in the Journal of Antiquity suggesting that. At least some of Scotland's nearly 600 crannings are much, much older, nearly 3,000 years older, putting them firmly in the Neolithic era. So again, we're continuing this pa- this worldwide pattern of of redating things that are much older, and um, it just gives you some insight onto how shaky these these firm quote firm dates are. Another thing that that uh, they think is uh, this, these these 
uh, might have overlooked the previous analysis of these crannings might have overlooked a previously suspected uh, prehistoric period. So there's a lot going on here, and here's a, a more zoomed out version of of the islands. This picture is just the outer the outer Hebrides, but then the, they actually span the entire almost the entire western uh, coast of Scotland. And then here's all the different uh, sites with the Cranigs um, that they've that they've dated. Again, there are 600 of these things, so they've dated just a handful of them. Uh, some dated uh, earlier than others, some more than 5,300 5, years ago, others were a little bit earlier. Archaeologists started excavating an Iron Age islet in a, in a lake on Scotland's uh, north, northeast island. Realized they were looking at a Neolithic site, and the reason why was because some of the tools and the pottery that they found there are five artificially constructed islets with Neolithic origins based on radiocarbon dating of Stone Age pottery and or ancient timbers discovered near the edges of the artificial structures. So again, the dates only only go insofar as what was lying around them. But it's pretty safe to assume, I think, just con again, considering that this is all covered in ice only 20,000 years ago at the last glacial maximum. Uh, it's kind of safe to say that there weren't people there unless you go back before the last glacial maximum which would push the dates way back further like 120,000 years plus further yeah i think it's within the neck the, the uh the past 12,000 years 12,000 being the the late the absolute earliest that you could date it in my opinion the condition of the nearly intact neolithic ceramic vessels found in the water around the cranigs is amazing they they uh that's why the fact that they were preserved is a uh, a good, a good reason why they're able to date the way they did and here are some uh, uh these are either drone shots or aerial shots from a, from a helicopter of these crane eggs so you can see here well f for this see you can kind of see the stone causeway that they that they put down here this one not so much but it's there if you zoom in more and here's another one that's more clear and this one's a little bit closer to uh the shore but still you can see that th these are dotting all over the the island or the coastline of the islands and it's fairly obvious that they are man-made just because of the the like well upon closer inspection you can see the stone causeways leading to this islet and they're very very small and one of the things they noticed was these crannogs are isolated from everyday neolithic life and and death ass assuming so their lack of tombs or human re remains they're located away from a domestic settlement. So the Cranigs are unlike settlements or other monuments found in, in uh, Britain. The megalithic mo monuments I was talking about earlier, like at Stonehenge. One of the archaeologists, he was pointing to the fact that some of the stones used to build the Cranigs weigh about 550 pounds. So if you're a Neolithic settler or, or human back in uh, 7,000 years ago or so, it would be an odd thing to do with your time to move 550 pounds of stones. So obviously someone did it though. So what was the actual reason? That's probably something we'll never know unless we find some writing or or something that points specifically to it. But Or if we find some sort of DNA or something like that, that could get us closer. But actual smoking gun evidence just seems so uh, out of reach at this point. So it's, it's kind of anyone's guess. Cummings suggests the site's isolation and the pottery that surrounds them could point to rituals that marked life transi transitions, like passage from childhood to adulthood. Clearly, it was not appropriate to take the pottery uh, brought to the Cranegg's home. Interesting. Yeah, that, that is funny that, that all the pottery seems to be there. Only 20% of Scotland's nearly 600 Cranegg's have even been scientifically dated. Uh, so again, like I said, there's not that much money and not that many people to go through the 600 Cranegg's within a short amount of time so it's going to take a while and again they seem very cautious as well these archaeologists is extrapolating is dangerous it's like trying to do a jigsaw when you've only got five pieces and you lost the box you don't know what the picture looks like so yeah it's kind of like they are stabbing in the dark but when you start taking into account other things like the ice age and and um the the, the migration of genetics and stuff it kind of helps with uh, trying to extrapolate any data that you can Here's a really good photo of of the stone uh, causeway here and um, the Cranig here. It's very interesting, and if it this indeed were some sort of rite of passage, um, and I'm and it's not a burial. Sorry, I think I might have misspoke earlier in the video and said it was a burial. It's not. 
um, because they haven't found any dead bodies or anything indicative of that. So um, it's very interesting because if, if each of these stones weigh on average 550 pounds, then that's how long does it take before you can create this? So how many people were involved? How many people that were involved who was hunting and, and fishing and feeding them while they were doing this? Because it's kind of hard to believe that all of them were doing both at the same time. But who knows? Everything's still up in the air. And you can see for scale, this boat and these people standing here. So they're really, again, it's not that big. So it's not like they would have stayed there for a long period of time. Uh, again, it does seem to fall in line with the fact that it probably served as some sort of ritual thing. And maybe they did stay. Maybe they were required to stay there for a certain amount of time. And maybe it was just one or two people. If And um, if that's the case, then maybe it was like a, some sort of test of discipline or or again, a rite of passage, or some cultural, uh, something of cultural significance. It's too, it looks too organized and, and contrived to be just a happenstance thing, which I don't think anyone's arguing. The team plans to conduct a broader survey to date more crown eggs in the outer Hebrides, uh, such as underwater surveys uh, using side scan sonar to create even better ways of spotting new uh, artificial Stone Age islets, or prompt reconsideration of sites already written off as Iron Age in origin. So. Um, that uh, again, side scans sonar, sonar is a really good way of not only mapping shallow water, but also in this case, uh, seeing if they overlooked any other crown eggs. I'm pretty sure that there's a ton more. And if there's, bet let's just say there's between 600 to a thousand of these things. Geez, you just saw this one, and all that effort it took to put it there. I mean, how long would it take? So if it is, like, does it take a hundred years? Like, how many generations of people carried on this? this tradition to have so many uh, of these sites so uh, that's just really uh, mind-boggling to me and it's just crazy that there's no uh, there's no ancient account of these things no one's ever really mentioned them it's just sort of a thing that we discovered on our own just through surveying uh, so it'll be interesting how this plays out uh, new Neolithic sites might be buried under what archaeologists always thought were Iron Age or medieval crown eggs, or just hiding in plain sight in the center of a windswept Scottish loch. So, um, yeah, there might be even more Neolithic sites. I mean, it, this place seems to be teeming with people at around 6,000 BC and onward. Um, these people with this interesting culture that have links all the way toward, uh, again, Turkey and genetic links all the way toward like the Caucasus. So that's also very uh, bizarre and interesting. I've heard so many different stories about the origins of the people of the Britons. Some, the most recent of which was uh, the Scythian people, the Scythians of uh, the steppe. They, it seems like those people were, they branched off and they were so adept at, at spreading their territory, expanding their territory and, and mobility and, and, and living in a system that that encouraged those those uh, uh, I guess those settlement capabilities, where if you track track their genetics, it spreads all across like branches from a tree it, it, from from Turkey and the or the steppes and the Cauc Caucasus and and some genetics from from uh, from Asia Minor, they all spread and it, it's very interesting that it happened so quickly. And they, they're all under the, this R1B and R1A uh, haplogroup. And so anyway, I, I heard that as well. And, and those people at, at the end of those branches would have reached parts of Britain and Scotland and would have become the Celtic people. And it's very, very interesting um, theory. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but it, it seems interesting. And the Scythians are a type of people who aren't really, that not a lot is known at least in the mainstream anyway, they're not really mentioned much or th or whatever is mentioned about them is very brief um, until pr fairly recently people have started uh, coming out with books and videos about them. So um, I'd recommend you guys check that out. And um, other than that, let me know what you guys think about crown eggs and, and um, ancient uh, Britain or I guess in this case, the, the 12,000 years isn't probably that ancient in the grand scheme of things, but... Um, about 5,000 plus Neolithic Britain. Uh, let, let me know what you guys think about that, and uh, I'll talk to you guys later.